All right. Happy holidays rolling out. This is your host, Crystal Jordan, and we are coming to you just to make sure you stay connected, to make sure you have some entertainment doing your holiday weekend. Trust me, today's conversation, today's reality check is going to be one that you don't want to miss. So go ahead and pull up a chair, get some of those leftovers, and let's get ready to get into it. I have with me a face that we've seen many, many, many times on our television screen and another face that you've probably seen online, inspiring and encouraging and giving a good word to people. The two of them have come together. They have fallen in love and they are taking us on their love journey. Please welcome Pastor Keon and Shawnee O'Neill. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Reality Check right here on Rolling Out. First of all, like I said, I have to say happy holidays. And I want to hear what you two were, were looking forward to the most about this holiday season. Thanksgiving kind of kicks it off. Yeah. Um, well, happy holidays to you as well. I think what we were looking forward to, the food, of course. I mean, <laughs> I get it, I get happy about food. My husband doesn't get as happy as I do. Like I I I think ahead for the food. So I was thinking about Thanksgiving dinner, like two, last Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe even less. You're right. <laughs> You're right. And I don't know, but you you I don't know. Did you see that lady who came up with the idea of putting the leftovers in the cupcake tin? Did you oh, see no, that? I didn't see that. Oh wow. She had, it was genius. So you took your your cupcake platter mm -hmm. to you know where you ever you were gonna eat and you filled each see how excited look he's embarrassed <laughs> you filled each thing each little cup up with whatever and you put yeah. it in the oven and that's your meal for each day so you know you just take five with you yeah. you got five days of <laughs> five days is a bit I much but I was, can you tell i was excited about the food i was just excited about the food that is really creative but i i was just was just saying before you guys got on like the food during Thanksgiving and Christmas is so, it's just so good. You just, you want to keep eating it. I heard someone say that, especially after the African-American community, we will be eating the leftovers well into the new year. We will you know what? Now that part is unacceptable, <laughs> but it's so true. Like if, as much as I want to yeah. eat the leftovers that long, I know I shouldn't. So <laughs> I will let them go and start over but you know it's only some families that redo that meal again for like new year's day i we don't really do that yeah i, I can that. i don't like leftovers and at all if oh, at all but i will eat holiday leftovers an, an additional day okay not like we eat leftovers. like you will probably pop yours in the microwave yeah. real quick like something no 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 he needs like the greens cooked back in a pot to make him <laughs> visually see oh. that this is a brand new meal, not leftovers. It's something about leftovers that, that just messes with him. Crystal, you know, everybody needs what they need. You know, you <laughs> just got to have what you got to have. See, and God bless Shawnee. Uh, so you no, no, re <laughs> no repeat meals in your house, I see. <laughs> right. I mean, unless I make them look brand new. I can. It's a way to do it, mm -hmm. but it's just a little extra work and it's OK. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. Him, him need it that way. It's him <laughs> need it that way. <laughs> well, we are excited to have you guys here. I want to play this this trailer because I'm excited that you all have decided to share um, your journey with us. This destination I do with VH1 is exciting. So we get a chance to actually kind of be a spectator to the, the everything going, building up to the wedding. And then, of course, uh, seeing your beautiful wedding. So let's let's watch this clip and then let's talk about um, what made you guys decide to share this with fans. And then, you know, moving forward from that, are we going to get a chance to see more? So let's check this out. <laughs> well, she, she's a stone cold fox. Pastor Keon, I, you know what? I, I picked that segment because I didn't even know that was a possibility. When I saw you guys uh, engagement online, I was like, oh my God, that's so sweet. Then I thought, oh, wow. So now she has to be a first lady. We think that's there's a lot that, like you said, that comes along with that title, a lot of expectations, a lot of uh, things that are a part of, I guess, the Christian faith that people automatically put on that title. So hearing you say that's not really important for you, that was really surprising to me. Have you always looked at it that way? Uh, no, <laughs> no, I haven't always looked at it that way. And I think that that is the. Uh, what the show is showing you is the evolution of both of us, because 
I, I had better see it that way because um, I, I don't believe that you should uh, marry a person um, the way they are and then spend the rest of their life trying to change them in who you need them to be. Like, um, because then I'll be happy and she'll be dissatisfied, which will result in us being miserable. So I, I learned through hard knocks, life, time, mistakes, that the best way to ensure success in any relationship is let the person be who they are yeah. um, so that you don't have to accuse them of being somebody that they're not. So she's going to be best loved and best accepted and most fruitful and effective when she's mostly uh, authentic to who she is. So I know it now. I'm glad I know it now. And it is the reason why we're here today. I love that. I love that. How does that make you feel, Shawnee? And did you feel because most I know most women, you know, the idea of, of being with a pastor, they definitely have an amazing message. And especially those that are called, you can feel that on them. But there usually is a little bit of apprehension about what that entails, the whole idea of the courtship. And then, of course, being the first lady. Did you feel any sense of apprehension about being a pastor's girlfriend and then absolutely go yeah absolutely um i mean that all went in my head like we you know if you i grew up in church so i knew what the first lady was supposed to be so i was thinking no nah, i don't that i cannot do that like that is not <laughs> who i am um and then you know i think that him saying to me, I just need you to be my wife. Like, I love you how you are. I love who you are. You know, he knows my heart. He knows I'm, I'm a good person, genuinely. But I just what the church has made the first lady out to be. I am not. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was I was more so afraid for him and how, you know, like, how is the church going to um react to you because of me mm -hmm. and he's like listen i if if people even get to know you they were they're gonna love you and yeah. you don't have to conform into what you know you don't have to put on the 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 big hats and the side and and that's not even really you know that's not the majority of the first ladies now but i think that we know what that what it looks like and it and it looks similar in most places and i don't think i represent that similarity so i was a little i was scared for him more yeah. than me, um, yeah. but it ha we haven't had that issue. And I think people do see my heart, you know, in, a, in our church and they see that I'm just genuinely going to be me. I'm not gonna force anything on anybody. If it, if it ain't for you, I respect that, but um, it hasn't been as hard as I thought it was gonna be mm -hmm. at all. It really hasn't been. Let me ask you, uh, Pastor Keon, because that's uh, I love because, I, of course, your first responsibility is to God and your wife and then, mm -hmm. and then your congregation and, and, the, and uh, I guess the sheep that are following you. How how do you how do you find yourself kind of finding that balance now, um, you know, being having someone that is a, a very public figure that people probably feel like they know more than they actually do. And then right. also making sure that you show up you know, as a responsible leader for those that, you know, are part of your congregation. Yeah, it's it's not difficult because like I am literally Crystal doing everything. I'm I'm doing what I was doing before she came. Like I didn't I didn't start pastoring when we got married. I was already doing it. You know, the new introduction is this new love life that we have and how it works together. And you know what I found out? I had better treat her right and keep her because that's the best way to get them to stay. Mm -hmm. If if they see me mistreating her and she leaves, mm -hmm. then they're going to see something that looks skeptical about me. So I, I got I got to clear my head. Focus on the main thing. Mm -hmm. That is the testimony. That is the thing that people are watching. That is how I'm being judged. And her words about me and how she views me will will be more. um impressionable. You'll see me more based on what she says about me than what I will ever show you because her words about me will be more powerful than my words about myself. So my job is to be genuinely um, um, respectful and, and, and to allow what she says about me to be facts. So that way the people can know. And the majority of the people in the church are women anyway. And if, mm -hmm. if there's one thing I know about a woman is they can feel other women. 
And so she's a, she's a better billboard for me than my mouth is. <laughs> That's that's a good point. Just how you treat your wife says speaks to who you are as a man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now let me ask you one more question, Pastor Keon, before I pivot over to Miss Shawnee here, because uh, even though she may have had some reservations or a little apprehension about being a pastor's wife, she has a very famous ex, very famous marriage that was a public, you know, the public was a very a, a big part of everybody was celebrated then when they split. And then we mm -hmm. know her from that relationship. Did that deter you at all or did you think wow this is this is a little different than i've situation that i've been in before uh no because when when you meet shawnee you meet her i mean shawnee doesn't come and sit at your table and say hey i am shawnee x and i was this and i had that shawnee's like um how much is the chicken wings <laughs> and and you like lemon pepper chicken wings and i want some french fries and and you know so so you meet her and you don't meet that life. Uh, we never talked about it. I'm telling you, right. We have never once sat together and talked about uh, the enormity of what her past was, because I will not interview her about her past. All I'm trying to do is build the future. And hopefully the future that I'm building will make her forget the past she had. So I didn't I didn't consult her about it. I didn't ask her about it. I am I am secure in myself. I've had. <laughs> Everybody else has asked me about it, and my answer is the same. It never dawned on me. It wasn't important then. It is important now. And um, I think that that is one of the things that we're trying to uh, institute in our mentorship and our communication and in what we're showing other couples how to do is that nobody wants to spend tomorrow talking about yesterday. Like, like meet me where I am. Uh, let's get where we need to be. And I'm sure in time, mm -hmm. once we solidify what we have, there may be time to go back and reflect mm -hmm. and talk about what was. But right now it's us time. Yeah, I love that. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. I love it. We talk about relationships on this channel all the time. So this is okay. awesome. What great what a great example to set for other men that you know, need to hear that. Sometimes there's, you know, they're so busy looking at who she's dated in the past. They're missing out on the fact that they could have something amazing right here. So that's, that's great advice. And, and there's a reason why it's where it is. So why would I consult it? Facts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so let, me, let me ask you, I think, you know, what, what, um, what pastor Keon just said about you, I don't, you know, never met you. I think I've interviewed you in the past, but I think what he said to you being very someone that, you know, doesn't show up as I'm such a, a being a very real person. I think that comes across. And I think that's why people have such an affection for you on television, because when we've seen you, um, you have come across as someone that is very relatable and mm -hmm. somebody that, you know, just women kind of look, you know, that girlfriend that you feel like is your girlfriend, even though you haven't met her. Um, let me ask you about basketball wives. And this is a very different role. This is a very different situation from what we've saw um, you as the producer and kind of like the the head, you know, executive behind that franchise. Why was it important for you to come back to television with this and us to see a different side, totally different type of dynamic than what we're used to seeing you with with the other ladies? Um, well, because, you know, being a producer, I was like, I am evolving. I'm not only evolving off camera, but I'm evolving on camera, behind the camera. Um, and I wanted to show the Basketball Wives fans and, and people that do follow me that I have evolved. You know, we were talking about talking about past. I, I literally lived my life on camera for the last 10 years. So it's so much that I've shared. And this is like such a, I think I'm my best self right now. Mm -hmm. And I definitely wanted, if, if I'm not going to do on camera reality TV ever again, and this was my last opportunity to do it, I wanted to show all of those people that followed me all those years that I am in the best space that I've ever been in life. And I wanted to share it with all of them and share my happiness and share my journey because it's possible, you know, and despite all the mistakes and all the things you do that mine happened to be documented, you know, um, I wanted to show, put this stamp on it of like, 
look, ladies, you know, we we grow. We have to we have to just go with the bumps and the and the curves and the mountains in the road. And and you can get to a place where you can find ultimate happiness and still remain in a space of growth. Yeah. You know, I'm still learning and still growing in this space, but I think that I'm being my best self and and trying and putting forth the effort every day to put forth my best self. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we I think it's always brave when people do share that much of their lives because it's got to be difficult here. Having p- people have an opportunity to to make comments and and you know talk about things that are very personal. That's that takes a lot of strength. Um, let me ask you this: being a bride for the second time at a total different place in your life, I'm sure you know a lot more. You, you're a different woman because you've gone through different experiences, had children, been able to mentor other women. What is the biggest difference about Shawnee this time going into getting ready to walk down the aisle than the first time? You know what, Crystal? No, and this is no shade to anybody in that space of being a bride the first time. This is all on me. I just mentally checked out of that, that old bride. Like if there's things that I honestly cannot remember and don't remember, I don't know that I was mentally or emotionally there. You know, I was physically doing the act and I, I physically was, but like the journey and, and the pieces and the nuggets and the things that I now realize that the work I needed to do before walking down the aisle, um, just to be the woman I needed to be, be the bride I needed to be, be the wife I needed to be. I did not know. I just did not know that. Then. And this point in my life, I realized all the pieces and all the work that I needed to put in to make this union what it's supposed to be and, and how it's supposed to be and the tools that we needed to put in our toolbox to make this work. Um, I just didn't know the work that I needed to do. You know, it, it's not just this, this somebody asks you to marry them and, and you just live a happily ever after. It's, it's a work in progress and something that I want to do and that I look forward to doing. It shouldn't be so, a, a burden or like heavy. Mm-hmm. It should be this process that you're joining this, this union you're joining into that's going to be a give and take. And you're going to have to, your roles will change sometimes and they'll move around. And sometimes you got to sit back and sometimes you got to accelerate. You just have to learn that flow and learning to flow with another human being in your life forever yeah. is a journey. And I did not know that then. And I know that now. And I look forward to every day accomplishing a little more in that journey mm-hmm. um, with him. And he makes it easy. He yeah. makes it really easy. That is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, Pastor Keon, what was it about? Because this series is Destination I Do. So why did you guys decide to get married in Anguilla and not in you know California or someplace here? What was it about the destination mm-hmm. that made you guys decide to go abroad and do it? You must have you must have put an application in to be our wedding coordinator because you just named every place we considered. <laughs> um, we we talked about California because that's where her family was, and then we said, "Oh my God!" Then all of my family has to get there. Mm-hmm. Then we said Houston, and then we said, "Oh my God!" All her family has to get here. Mm-hmm. And then we said, "Oh, and if it's in Houston, then uh, the whole church is going to expect that they can come, <laughs> and ain't nobody got time, budget, or space for all of that." Yeah, you're talking about 15,000 people who would have said, you know, we want to come. Yeah. So then I said, well, let's go to Mexico. And then we started getting with our team and said, OK, we don't know nobody in Mexico who can do <laughs> nothing for us. <laughs> then one of our um, team members, uh, Marvette, she said, well, I am the global brand ambassador for an island that I want you all to go to. Have you ever been to Anguilla? Nope, never been. She said, how about we set up a site visit? Let's go to Anguilla and you make the decision. Now, my wife to be is looking at all of the pictures online. She's falling in love. <laughs> Here I am, Crystal. I oh, don't fall in love too fast. <laughs> Get there. It, it ain't going to be all of what you're thinking. You're seeing one beach. You're seeing them all. This is what I'm saying, right? When I got there, I turned into her. I'm like, Lord, this is it. This is the place. Oh, it's amazing. The people are beautiful. I want to retire here. I love, I 
love that place. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, you know, a lot of Christians, you know, they, they have all kinds of things that they say, but I believe that, you know, you have this spirit animal in you that, you know, that you just know when you're home and you just know when you have found a connective tissue to your destiny. And we stepped on that island. Yeah, that was all she wrote. It was it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Listen, we visited every single possible plausible hotel on that <laughs> island. Yeah, We didn't just go to one place. We went to every <laughs> single hotel that had a front door and a back door. <laughs> Yeah. And it took us three days, full days, driving around to every. We went to abandoned ones that were not open. Oh my God. We went to ones that had been closed down that nobody knew was closed down. We went to every one of them and we settled on the place that we settled on for, for obvious reasons. But that island, it grabbed us. And then, last but not least, and I don't say this with any prejudice, I say it with, 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 humility and pride that the, the, the African descendants on the island own 90% of the property. So we had people who are African descent uh -huh. serving us breakfast who owned a soccer team yeah, yeah. and a woman serving us lunch who owned a successful juice bar company. So the ingenuity of the people, the spirit of the people, uh, the, the energy of the island, the food, the, the food ambiance, was, everything. You name it. <laughs> the food was, and, and I'm not a foodie. I'm not a foodie. You're, he, he, listen, but I am. But the food is amazing. But I can't, you got, I, I almost feel like you got lucky because he's not a foodie, but then he doesn't want leftovers. So we're going to have to watch. That's, that's hard. hard. <laughs> that's, that's, that's I know. Crazy. It's a struggle, Crystal. It's a struggle. Like, I try to get him excited. Like yeah. I'm going to probably when we get off of here, I'm going to start talking about whatever our food is tomorrow, and he's going to give me that look right there, like, oh, we haven't even had dinner today. I'm like, yeah, I'm over that now. I already know what dinner is, but tomorrow. So, <laughs> oh my god. Well, I, Angula is absolutely beautiful, and I've had a chance to see a couple of episodes. I, this is it's a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful location. You guys look mm -hmm. beautiful together. Um, I don't want to keep you too long. I know this is the holiday season, but I do want to ask. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Shawnee. I I think there are a lot of women that watch that have watched your your progress, and they've seen you be successful. But I think it's an it's it's hopeful in a very different way to see someone find love, and mm -hmm. to see them find it in a way that is truly representative of who they are and what they genuinely needed and that's what we see mm -hmm. when we see you guys together it's like wow it's not just you know people can read through when things aren't authentic but this it feels very different it feels like it's a love affair that is reminiscent of the woman <laughs> that you become so, Listen, mm. just, since you said that i just want to put this in so i was with a friend the other day uh preaching at his church and he didn't get a chance to come to the wedding because in our list, somehow his name got left out. So he saw us and he charged us up, Chris. So he was like, I didn't get a chance to come to the wedding and da, 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 da. And he was going off on me. And I looked at my wife and I said, baby, his name was left off the list too. And the way we start defending each other, he was looking on the outside and he said, to her, he said, man, y'all relationship is for real. Like <laughs> y'all got each other back. Like if he wasn't telling the truth, she had so bad. <laughs> But so in that. January, yeah, we faked it so long in life uh, <laughs> and so many times. It's like, you know, right now it's time to be real. Right. And <laughs> be real. And I think, Crystal, that's why it is so genuine, because we really do like each other. Right. They really right. do love each other. And I'm going to go to bat for him. He's going to go to bat for me. Um, we enjoy each other. And that's what makes it so easy is because I want to be with him and I will do what I need to do to make this work. And he doesn't require me to have to change anything and vice versa, right? He is a pastor and I am okay with adapting what I need to adapt in my life because I want to be with this man and nothing about him makes me have to conform in a way that I'm not willing to do so or want to. You know, yeah. I don't have to turn into somebody else. It's just 
uh, you know, you have to adjust life with what comes and goes. We adjust life for work. We adjust life for our kids. We have to adjust life. You know, I know a lot of women would be like, I'm not changing and he's not going to make me. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. If you want to be with this man, if you want to be with anybody, you adjust life according to what comes and goes. Absolutely. In any area. And relationships are a part of that. And, um, you know, I am enjoying the adjustment. I really, really am. And again, it doesn't even require me to have to do a whole lot. I'm not jumping through any, you know, fire rings or anything like that. I am enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm loving every bit of it. I got to ask you, we know that your ex um, made a statement that went viral when he said, um, in my for in my marriage uh, with Shawnee, I did I messed up. She didn't do anything wrong, and I wonder for me being someone that was married the first time and then has a second marriage. I wonder did that did that make you? I'm sure you already knew all of that years ago, <laughs> but having, having him say that publicly did that give you a like you know what? I can put that to bed a lot, and and or had you already moved past it and ne didn't need that acknowledgement? I think I needed that five years in, you know what I mean? Like I needed that back then. And when I realized that wasn't going to happen, I, I had, already, I had let that go so long ago. I think this is his truth and something that maybe he needs to share with everybody. And I respect that and appreciate it, but it was not needed at, at this place that I'm in now and um, where I've evolved to, I did not need whatever that is. I don't know. I don't know if it, it, you would call it an, an a, I guess, accountability. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy for him. And I, I respect his accountability. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But do I need it? Did I need to hear it? No, it was nothing that I missed. And, and even hearing it, you know, I, I just feel like that was, that was his truth. And I'm, and I'm glad he's able to share it. Yeah. That's what the healing sounds like. Well, Pastor Keon, the last question I'm going to ask you, Again, like I, I mentioned to Shawnee, there are a lot of people that watch television and they like to see the, the drama, but they also are looking for hope. They're also looking for encouragement. And I wonder if you can share, you know, we're going into the holiday seasons. A lot of people are feeling depressed because they don't, they haven't found their significant other. They haven't found the one that God has. Mm -hmm. yet. Anything that you can share with them as they wait and they go into the season of, you know, the holidays. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes uh, the over anticipation of a thing will make you miss out on the journey, um, waiting on the result and, and becoming the type of person that can be happy, irregardless of what your circumstance is, should be your primary motivation. Mm -hmm. I need to be happy before I meet somebody, not happy because I met somebody. Cause I always say, that when your happiness is dependent on the person bringing it, then they can take it away when they leave. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to engineer your life uh, with these parameters where your your happiness and, and your pursuit isn't dependent uh, upon somebody. And let me tell you something. There are a lot of people who have somebody who wishes they were single, mm -hmm. a lot of single people who wish they had somebody. And I just wish everybody would be happy with where you are until it is your time to come out of either one of those circumstances and walk into what your next is. So just be content in the state that you're in uh, and somehow in that patience and that pursuit and that building uh, of self-confidence, you'd be surprised what you start to attract when you become somebody new. I love that. Well, let people know where they can check out Destination I Do. And I'm just going to throw something out there. I hope that after this uh, seeing you guys get married, I hope we'll be able to see more you know, more of the relationship, yeah. Johnny. Find a way. Executive produce something else so we can. <laughs> <laughs> we do have, we do we have do. a um, Grow Zone podcast that we're going to do. Yeah. Um, but you can check out this special Monday at nine o'clock. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you, you feel the love and feel like you're there with us on this journey. Virtually, we're not 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 there to take up a plate, but they're just virtually. Right. right. Yeah. 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 That part. Thank you so much. And like I said, we're right. seeing more from you. Happy holidays to both of you. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.
All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out. Make sure that you check out Destination. I do. Like I said, I had a chance to see an advanced copy and they're just so adorable. But what's What's amazing to me is being able to watch uh, Shawnee in a different phase. This is a very different Shawnee than we saw uh, with Basketball Wives, but I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it. And what's better than a love story during the holidays? So make sure that you check out Destination I Do with Pastor Keon Henderson and, of course, our girl Shawnee O'Neal. I thank you guys for hanging out with me right here on Rolling Out and, of course, on From Crystal XO with Love on YouTube. I will see you guys next week. I hope you're enjoying your holiday festivities, friends and family, and all of that. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.